Would everyone please stand for the national anthem and presentation of colors? So proudly we hang at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through. So gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave through the night that I. You may be seated. Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to the 2017 Police Academy graduation. Uh, on behalf of the Grand Rapids Community College and the Police Academy, we welcome you. At this time, we're going to call uh, Dr. Howard Earl Jr., uh, the senior pastor of the New Hope Baptist Church, to lead us in our invocation.
Let us pray. God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day that you have made. We rejoice, God. We are glad in it. And now we pray for this entire ceremony, this evening of celebration. God, we're grateful for all of what you have shared with us, the journey up to this point. And so tonight, as we celebrate and reflect and look forward to the potential that lies in front of us in these recruits, we thank you for the strength, for the courage, for the covering, and for the grace. And now we just ask God for your special blessing over our period of celebration on this evening. It is our desire, God, that you are glorified out of all that is said and all that is shown and all that is expressed on this evening. And as always, we're mindful that it is only by your grace that we are who we are, that we have what we have. We're grateful for the privilege to serve humanity, to protect. We're grateful for the privilege to live in a nation that is sovereign, where we have the freedom and the liberty that we fight for justice on a daily basis. And so we're grateful for this recruit, recruiting class, God, that have called, have accepted the call to greater service, to protect and defend those liberties and to protect and defend citizens of our communities. Again, we say thank you, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. On behalf of the Grand Rapids Community College Police Academy, the staff, recruits, I would like to thank each and every one of you who have taken time out of your day to come and celebrate the accomplishments of our young men and women. I would also like to thank the family members for your support, patience, and encouragement of our recruits. Uh, for over the last 10 months, they've worked diligently preparing for uh, their career in law enforcement. I would like to acknowledge our president in his absence, Dr. Bill Pink, uh, the provost, Dr. Chesley. I would also like to welcome and acknowledge our Dean of Workforce Development, Dr. Amy Koning, uh, Associate Deans, Dr. Jimmy Baber, and Dr. Pam Miller. I'd like to uh, also acknowledge our Board of Trustee members. Uh, we have with us uh, Cynthia Bristol, as well as Richard Stewart. So we want to thank them for coming out and celebrating with us today. I would also like to uh, thank our wonderful Police Academy staff, for without them, we could not produce the product uh, that uh, and mold and shape the potential of these young men and women who sit before you. I would like to thank our advisory board members, uh, for they give us guidance and leadership as we continue to strive to become better um, and again, produce the best recruits that we can send out to serve our communities. And I also want to thank our alumni, uh, so those who have come through the Grand Rapids Community College Police Academy and are currently serving in their careers, as well as uh, MCO staff that are present with us today. At this time, we would like to share a short video. Uh, this presentation gives just a short snapshot of what the recruits extended or experienced over the last uh, 10 months. I would like to thank recruit Casey Metcalf and our media uh, department for putting this video together.
At this time, would the squad leaders uh, from the class of 84 please stand? These uh, recruits were selected because of their qualities, um, exemplified those of leadership. Uh, each of them, uh, they took care of the daily business of the police recruits, uh, from inspections, uh, relaying daily announcements, updating their, their chats, their Facebook pages. Uh, they served as a liaison between uh, my office um, and the other recruits. Uh, these young men and women sacrificed their time uh, it wasn't always easy uh, being in a position of leadership over their peers uh, because that also uh, caused challenges. But I believe that uh, they were carefully selected and grew as a result. So I want to thank each and every one of you for your sacrifice, for your commitment, uh, not only to this academy, but to your fellow recruits. Thank you. Would recruits uh, Ryan La and Aaron Heisinga please join us on the stage? As they come, each squad will have representatives that will uh, give a statement or a brief speech, as well as an acknowledgement of an uh, instructor who was selected uh, from their squad as the instructor of the year. Good evening. 39 weeks, give or take the few holidays we had off, give or take the weekends on the firearms range and the driving range. The blood and sweat loss from staying fit and shrimping. The tears from the long nights of studying and doing homework before, during, and after your job, knowing you have to be back at class in four hours. <clears throat> What we learn in these 39 weeks is just a stepping stone in this ever-evolving career. Without our instructors, our family, friends, employers, each other, we would not be where we are today. Congratulations, Session 84. Here's to the next 1,300 plus weeks of our careers. All right, first off, we're gonna present the Academy gift. So if Jessica Havens from Session 85 could come up here to accept the gift. <coughs> we're presenting this gift to Session 85 uh, with best wishes to you guys. Next, we're presenting the Instructor of the Year Award. Um, I mean, first off, we can't thank each and every one of them enough, so if we could get another round of applause for them. Thank them for taking their time out of their day and giving everything they have to us. The instructor we uh, chose this year was Officer Morningstar from Kentwood Police. If you could come up here, please. Uh, section lead or squad leaders, excuse me, from B Squad. So recruit Kayla Coonley and Kirk Van Proyen.
Good evening, everyone. First off, I want to thank everyone for being here and for all the support you've shown all of us. We are here today to celebrate our accomplishments. We have taken the first steps into our new career. Our success in, is due in no small part to our own tenacity and effort as individuals. We have also had the benefit of our wonderful instructors who have given us the tools we need to succeed in our future endeavors. We must also remember the administrative and support staff that enables the instructors to do their work, helping us to become the best police officers possible. Thank you all. We cannot forget our families, the people that have supported us through the academy. These are the people who have sacrificed their time with us so that we can succeed. Without the support of our mothers, fathers, siblings, spouses, and significant others, we would not be here today. Thank you. The motto for B-Squad is a family born not from a bloodline, but bonded in life by a blue one. We have truly become a family. We have all had our trials during the academy, but we have drawn support and inspiration from our fellow recruits. Life did not stop while we attended class. There have been children born, family emergencies, and even some minor injuries while we have been here. Yet, we have persevered, we have thrived, and we have succeeded. Many in the class study together, but we also discuss our personal lives while our children play together. Like any family, we have not always agreed on everything, but that has led to spirited discussions both in class and on our personal time. We have had these discussions on nearly every topic imaginable, and we know where each one of us stands. Through this, we have developed trust in each other. We have developed the trust needed to work together, the trust needed in our partners. I know that I can stand with any of my classmates against any obstacle, any adversary, and prevail. We will bring the spirit with us to the agencies with which we are employed. We will develop this trust in others and their trust in us. The communities we serve will come to know us as problem solvers, willing to help in any way possible. We will become the men and women, the partners, and the officers that we were meant to be. GRCC Police Academy offered us evening classes in B-Squad, for which many of us was an open door. Many of us worked full time and took care of children during the day while attending classes in the evening. Thank you, GRCC Police Academy, for allowing us to walk through that door. We chose to gift the academy with a, coo a cooler that the recruits can use for weekends when they're outdoors at firearms or learning emergency vehicle operations. We'd also like to thank our instructors for the knowledge and wisdom they shared with us. We wouldn't be here without you, and we appreciate the time you gave us. We'd also like to acknowledge who we chose as our instructor of the year. You always encouraged us and pushed us in the right direction. Our instructor of the year is Lieutenant McGuffey. Thank you for helping us pave the way. At this time, we would like to call so, several of our instructors up, uh, for they truly get to know our recruits. Uh, they spend their time, as it was stated already, uh, they work and they toil on their day-to-day uh, their -day duties, but then they come and they still pour into each and every one of our recruits. So we're going to ask that in this order uh, that these instructors will come and present their awards. Officer Bo Peters from the Grand Rapids Community College Police Department, retired Sergeant Mark Reminga from the 
uh, Kent County Sheriff Department and Sergeant Stephanie Morningstar from the Kentwood Police. Good evening. I am very fortunate and blessed to have the opportunity to teach both squads in the area of physical fitness, subject control, and firearms. It is uh, very fortunate to teach those sections because you have an opportunity to see the students outside of a traditional classroom setting. And in doing that, you get to really see their personalities. Uh, you get to see how they react, how their character is when you push them outside of their comfort zone, including spraying them with OC. That's a real test. Well, one of those classes, as I mentioned, that I teach is physical fitness. And another opportunity that that class provides me is to present the Charles Wells Excellence in Physical Fitness Award. This award is not necessarily given to the recruit who performs the best in the physical fitness standards, though it does help. The items that I take in consideration when selecting the recipient is their commitment level to physical fitness, and I also consider how they have led their squad mates in encouragement and lead them by example. The two recipients that I've chosen, one per squad this year, both did a great job consistently leading by example. Neither are necessarily the most outspoken, but both took every opportunity to demonstrate quality uh, repetitions and exercise and what it means to just get the best out of every single thing that they did. So from A squad, the Charles Wells Excellence in Physical Fitness Award goes to recruit Justin Roan. And from B Squad, recruit Jeff Newland. On July 8, 2007, Officer Robert Kosminski of the Grand Rapids Police Department was shot and killed while responding to a domestic assault. Officer Kosminski graduated from the GRCC Police Academy in 1999. A few short months later, after he graduated from here, he began his career with the Grand Rapids Police Department. Soon after his death, the staff here at GRCC knew that we needed to do something to honor Officer Kosminski. So with the help of the GRCC Foundation, we approached the Kosminski family with the idea of establishing the Officer Kosminski Memorial Scholarship. We asked the Kosminski family if they wanted to take part in the process, and they jumped at the opportunity to do so. So we established the guidelines in which we would select the recipient. Each year, the Academy students write an essay. The Police Academy staff narrowed the applicants down based on their essay as well as their performance in the Academy to that point. After we narrowed down the, uh, the applicants to three students, we turned that o information over to the Kosminski family for the final selection. I know that the Kosminski families pour over these essays. They spend lots of time reading and rereading. They spend even more time discussing amongst the family the candidates, and ultimately they choose the recipient. Well, this year they were unable to choose just one recipient. So they chose to award the scholarship to all three of the finalists. So I want to acknowledge all three of the recipients this year. And we'll start with recruit Ryan Law. Second recipient, recruit Kayla Coonley. <laughs> the 
And the third recipient is recruit Zach Cornelia. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome here. Um, the next two awards I'm going to give out to some individuals. Uh, they're a firearms award. Uh, I don't have to choose anybody. We kind of let the bullets land uh, where they will. Um, we teach them how to shoot accurately. We teach them how to shoot quickly, how to get out of the holster, um, how to shoot uh, in a combat situation or in maybe a, a situation that requires a little more precise marksmanship. Um, they primarily work with a handgun, but they do spend an entire day working with a 12-gauge shotgun and an AR-15 style patrol rifle. Um, so uh, basically what we do is we come up with some competitions. One involves all three guns where we base uh, the competition on their ability to run around the range after a bow where somebody puts them through a bunch of burpees and gets them out of breath. And they have to engage targets. And we go down and we score them. We take their time and they, and they finish where they do. So we have three events we typically use every year. Uh, if you place in the top five, you get points for that. And then we add up the points for all the events. And those people who uh, either win one or maybe just do quite well in each of the three end up with the top points and that's how the award's based. Uh, this year was a little bit different. We had um, a tie in, uh, in both the squads actually. Uh, people took first in this one and fourth in this one and then inverted it the other way around. So for A squad, I'd like to call up uh, Kevin Cyrus. <laughs> and Justin Roan. one here. And for B squad, again, uh, normally it's one individual. Again, this year it turned out to be two. I'd like to call up first uh, Mr. Brandon Nolan. Good job, Brandon. And Tyler Zivakowski. Good evening. Every year I always come up with a great speech and I always have it all written out and after the first sentence I totally throw out the window. So this year I decided, you know what, I'm not even going to write anything down except for the two people that got the awards. So these are my notes for tonight. I have the pleasure of teaching emergency vehicle operations. Um, I teach that with Kyle Griffith, Robin Maley who's in the back, and then Chad Hargrave. We get the recruits for a solid weekend plus an eight-hour class which I think is pretty unique because we teach the eight hour class with both A squad and B squad. So I always make the rule that you can't sit by a fellow squad mate. So it's kind of fun to watch them. It's like a junior high dance. They're like separated and then they get mixed up. So, but what we do is we look at overall attitude, driving abilities and skills, the test score, the written test score. And we also do a little bit of a competition. Um, but we just take that all into account and then just watch them and how they support their fellow squad mates. So, and this year we chose two, one from A squad and one from B squad. Zach, I haven't been able to say your name since boot camp. So Zach K from A squad, come on up here. and then Brandon Blattner from B-Squad. So, and I just wanna be able to tell you guys congratulations. Welcome to the family, and just remember that 80%.
truly I want to thank our instructors again because we have an awesome and amazing core of men and women who serve and continue, have served and continue to serve um, in the profession of law enforcement that again pour in hours and hours of time into these recruits. At this time, I would like to introduce our MCOS field representative. Um, we had a unique uh, situation. Our uh, previous uh, representative retired, uh, so we had a new representative joined us, uh, but he was here consistently. And so I'd like to welcome to the stage Mike Logie uh, from MCOS, who will present our MCOS Outstanding Performance Awards. Thank you. Yeah, you got the second string. I'm sorry about that. Um, MCOLS is the uh, governing body for law enforcement in the state of Michigan, and we set the curriculum for the police academy. Um, and the current curriculum is 594 hours, but uh, GRCC uh, greatly exceeds that amount of hours. So uh, I want to I want to take a minute to thank the instructors. Um, there's 19 police academies in the state of Michigan, and without great instructors, you do not produce a great product. And they produce an excellent product here. Uh, these graduates go all over all over the state, and the reputation is stellar from uh, Grand Rapids Community College. So I want to thank the instructors. You know, a lot of them, I always tell the students, you know, these, these uh, instructors, they're working midnights, they're on their days off, they take vacation days, and they're, not, they're definitely not doing it for the money, they're doing it for the love of um, uh, teaching. And um, uh, MCOLS wants to thank those uh, instructors, because again, without those uh, folks, we wouldn't have an uh, excellent police academy. Um, the MCOLS award is, is kind of unique because it's given not only um, just based upon academics, but also it's based upon um, leadership and, and some of the other skills that you definitely want in a, in a good police officer. And, and um, you know, it's a very tumultuous time, I think, for law enforcement in the state. Uh, but um, I think it's the most noble profession there is, law enforcement. And I think now is, is it's, 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 while it's a lot of controversy swirling, but it's, it's really, to me, nothing but filled with opportunities for the young people, opportunities to, you know, bridge the gap with what's going on uh, with police community relations. And it's just every era is different. Their era is a lot different than my era. Um, they're going to be walking around recording every single thing, but to them that will seem like the norm, where to me it wouldn't. So, um, But it, I think it's a great opportunity uh, right now to get into law enforcement, and there's so many jobs out there. That's, that's the real good news. So um, these are hot off the uh, MCOLS uh, workshop, uh, woodworking shop, kind of unique. Um, uh, Obviously, A and B squad each receives a reward, and I'm going to go with A squad first. And I'm not going to be afraid to do his name because I'm probably going to do it wrong. But Zachary Corneal, close. <laughs> yeah, close enough. I think I'm going to be able to get the B squad person, Brandon Nolan. Once in a while, we break off the UP accidentally, so we got him here in one piece. Just give these young men and women another hand of applause. We're nearing the, the end of our ceremony, but I wanted to just take this chance or this opportunity uh, to speak to the recruits. Uh, for many of us, or for many of you, um, our journey or your journey in the police academy didn't start uh, together. Uh, for others, I remember you sitting in various classes, um, you know, asking questions as you moved closer uh, towards your goal of getting into the police academy, all leading up until this very moment uh, where you stand at the brink of graduation um, and entering into this profession of law enforcement. I can remember the day um, 
or I can remember as clear as day about 21 years ago uh, when I sat in the same seat that you're sitting right now. It was about 121 miles away from here, but I remember as a young recruit getting ready to start my career being filled uh, with a lot of different emotions. I was excited that the academic experience was done, as I know you guys are. Um, but I was excited even more about starting my career. But as I sat there in that excitement, I also was overcome with fear. Uh, fear largely due to the unknown. Uh, fear of making mistakes. Uh, fear of letting my loved ones down. And that's natural. But I want you to just trust in your training, uh, trust in yourself and your ability, uh, and just be human. Uh, and remember, this is a, a career, it's, it's one of the most noble professions that you can ever um, enter. Um, and I say that truly from the heart, and I know that um, these men and women who sit behind me, uh, who still wear the uniform, uh, take pride in all that they have done. And we don't always make the right choices, but it takes a special individual to go into a profession and a life of serving, a life of service. As I thought about what I could say in these final moments or your last police academy experience uh, that you can take into your career, I began to think about the law enforcement uh, oath of honor. For you guys repeated this oath every day of the academy for the last 10 months. This oath it was more than just a ritual. It was more than just an excerpt that we took from the International Association of Chiefs of Police. Uh, for those of you in the audience, the, as I stated, the, uh, they recited this each and every day. The purpose of this recital was so that at this point in their lives, that it would become more than just a performance requirement but it would be ingrained in the very hearts of these men and women who sit before you. So I felt that it was important or imperative that at this time, I'm in policing you as recruits completely understand the oath or the meaning behind the oath uh, that has become a part of who you are. So I broke it down by the different stanzas. So the first is on my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. So and then I broke that down even further. Because in this statement, you're giving your oath, you're giving your word, it says on your honor. So it's a commitment, a guarantee that you will not go astray, that you will not betray your badge. And that badge is a shield that represents the cover and the protection that you were sworn to give to those men and women in the communities that you will serve. Says so you would never betray that badge. It serves as a symbol, again, of the protection and the covering. Then it says that you would never betray your integrity or your character. For your integrity and character are made up of the moral code and values that reflect who you are as individuals and who you will become as you enter into this profession. Your integrity and character are made up of the moral code and values that, are, again, are the ethical principles and values that you promise to live by referenced in this oath. As law enforcement officers, we're given an enormous amount of power and authority, which is given to us by the people that we are commissioned to serve. Even though during your career you will see many people at their absolute worst, we must not forget that we are a part of that same community and to treat all individuals with dignity and respect. I will always have courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. Oftentimes when we think about holding people accountable, we think about those men and women that will have occasion to arrest. But if you really look at this stanza closely, it's talking about you. 
It's talking about having the strength and the courage to stand up, to hold yourselves accountable and to a higher standard. And not only you, but your brothers and your sisters as well. You are the future. You are the now of law, law enforcement. And you can make a difference, and you will make a difference. Because as I stated many times in your classes when I came in, if you don't, then I will haunt you. You will see the smallest big version of me sitting on your shoulder, <laughs> making sure that you hold yourselves accountable and to that higher standard. I will always uphold the Constitution, my community, and the agencies that I serve. As law enforcement officers, you don't get to pick and choose who you serve. Your actions are to be guided by the Constitution of the United States, State of Michigan, your local ordinances, and your department agencies, rules and regulations, and their policies and procedures. There will be times in your career when you will go from doing nothing to the high stress of a vehicle or foot pursuit, or arresting someone that just traded their young child for their addiction. I say this to remind you that you have to be vigilant to protect your heart and spirit so that you do not become overly cynical. Oftentimes, I pop in your class and I tell you to keep, keep normal friends. Some of you would chuckle, but I define normal friends as people outside of your family, outside of the profession of law enforcement so that you stay rooted to the very fact that the people that you serve are people. They are individuals, regardless to the situations that you will come in contact with them. To the families, continue to support your loved ones as they go through this transformation. When you see them and they come home, uh, with, and seeming like the weight of the world is on their shoulders, uh, know that if they don't share all the details of their duty, of their tour duty, it's not because they don't love you. It's the very opposite. It's because they love you and because they're trying to protect you from the evils that they have to see in this profession. Since 2009, the Grand Rapids Community College Police Academy has engaged in the presentation of a challenge coin. Uh, this process dates back to uh, World War I. This, cur this, excuse me, this coin serves as a reminder that you are now joining a family, that you are now joining a community, that you are now joining something that represents a greater being, something greater than yourself. So this coin is to serve as a reminder of that commitment, of that oath, and of your commitment to your brothers and sisters in law enforcement. It is my challenge to you, again, as I stated over the, the last five months, to be better than I was any day that I wore my uniform. But I challenge you even greater to be better than the sum total of each and every one of the instructors who poured out into your lives over the last 10 months. And I say that with all confidence, knowing that you are able to do it. If you stick to your training, if you remember to be human, and remember to treat people with dignity and respect. Honor yourselves, your fellow recruits. Again, this Grand Rapids Community College Police Academy and the law enforcement profession. Again, we did not start this journey together, but over the last five months, you have become a part of me. And I hope that somewhere along the line that I became a part of you as well. Because we're greater because of the influences of all of the people that we come in contact with. Take the good from all of us and go and do greater things. I would ask that at this time that uh, the Dean of Workforce Development, Amy Coney, would join us, as well as our Criminal Justice Department head, Nikki Banks, um, to assist me with the presentation of the coins.
staff from A Squad, please join me as well. Kevin Cyrus. Trayvon Dewar. Travis Hopkins. Aaron Heisinger. Mario Jimenez. <laughs> Kylie Johnson. Zachary Cornelia. Ryan La. Casey Metcalf. <laughs> Jeffrey Ostite. Zachary Penningman. <laughs> James Nathaniel Pickett. Gerald Anthony Polanco Nunez. Oh. 
Justin Roan. Stephen Scalisi. <laughs> Melinda Schwab. Mark Shordsma. Garrett Strothide. Jesua Whitley. From Squad B, Brandon Blattner. Olivia Boot. <laughs> Justin Bradford. Joshua Clapp. <laughs> Sydney Cooper.
Jacob Evans. Eric Garcia. Benjamin Glass. Brandon Noling. Kayla Coonley. <laughs> Brandon Mosley. Jeff Newland. Joshua Prince. Joseph Punt. <laughs> Joshua Smythe. Joseph Trejo. <laughs> Kirk Van Proyen. Matthew, verse 4.
Patrick Weaver. Tyler Zibakowski. Be seated. We give our Session 84 recruits and officers another round of applause. As you can see by the many different uniforms, um, many of our recruits have already received uh, offers of employment. Um, I want to personally thank each of the agencies who have recruited our students um, and encourage those of you who are still hiring to snatch up the rest of them. Uh, many of the remaining recruits, though, are still in the background um, investigation stages. I believe prior to the Today, more than half of our recruits already had conditional offers. So out of 39 recruits, more than half of them already had offers. So give them another round of applause. Some of those agencies who have hired our young folks uh, expressed the desire to actually pin uh, those recruits or those officers. So I would ask that uh, Sheriff Stelma or representatives from the Kent County Sheriff Department, if you would join us on the stage, please. And I ask that uh, now deputies uh, Jeshua Whitley and Melinda Schwab would join us on stage.
will from the Muskegon Police Department, Chief Lewis and or Captain Dennis Lohr, please jo join us on stage. And I ask that recruits now becoming officers, uh, Jake Evans and Kayla Coonley will join us on stage. We ask that if uh, Director Armold from the Portage Department of Public Safety uh, will join us on stage and Lieutenant Wolf. And then we ask that a recruit now Officer Sidney Cooper will join us. We again want to congratulate all the other recruits um, who also have um, gotten offers and employment as well. I'm extremely uh, proud of this unit, of this, of this session. Uh, they put in a lot of hard work and it's exemplified in the number of young men and women who already have um, their career started. Um, at this time, uh, we will close out our ceremony with another word of prayer, so if we can bow, please. Gracious God, our eternal Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the lives of these men and women who have chosen this calling, this profession, and this life of service. We pray now as we depart from this place that you would lead us and guide us, that you will cover them not only this day, not only tomorrow, but throughout their entire careers. Allow them to hold themselves and others to a much higher standard and allow them to represent you in all that they do. Father, we thank you once again for all that you have given and we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This concludes our ceremony. Uh, we invite you to um, celebrate and love on these men and women, but I present to you the men and women of session 84. Thank you all again for helping us celebrate this occasion. Uh, please drive safely and have a great night.